is good stuff this morning. Happy homecoming. And uh, as y'all know, if some of y'all were here last year, boy, it was a big homecoming. So this year, we, we scaled it back to make it a normal homecoming. And y'all stuck with me. So anyway, I tried to prepare a, a message uh, for today. But before we get started, I got a little something I heard the other day about this pastor. This pastor had gone to this church and he'd been there serving and uh, so he was, he, he noticed there was a family he hadn't been to see yet. And he really, it was bothered him and was really getting the best of So it was later in the evening and he decided to go to their house real quick and just want to make a last stop, didn't bother to call. And some of you know today, at this time of age, it's best to call before you come. But anyway, he drives up, he sees the lights on the cars in the driveway. He assumes everything must be fine. So he goes up to the door, he rings the doorbell and he waits. And he hears the TV on. He can see it through the blinds. He knows that they're here. I mean, come on. The dog's actually chirping in the back room. So he knows that somebody's there. So he rings again. And nobody comes to the door. Pretty soon he knocked on the door just to make sure, just to last attempt to get their attention. Still nobody came to the door. So he pulled out a little sticky patty out of his pocket. And he wrote down on it, Revelation 3. And he stuck it on the door. And he went on about his business. Got home. Sunday came around, and guess what? That family was sitting right there. And they'd come to church. And boy, he just he knew in his heart, poor guy, he really just thought they shunned him. You know what I mean? Just, oh, they didn't want to see him. So he went on, and he preached the message, and they took up the offering. And that day, there was a special note in the offering, so the so the people that got it, they got it out real quick, and they ran to the pasture, and they gave it to them. And the amazing thing is, it was the same note he left on these people's door. And it said, Revelation 3.20. But he looked down on the bottom, and it said, it said on there simply, Genesis 3.10. Now to put all that together for you, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Genesis 3.20 says, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. How many of y'all heard that before? I said, that is so funny. I heard that and I was like, oh, that's going to be a good one. That's a good one. That's good enough to share. You know what I mean? But I was eating on it too much and really I was about to get chuckled up midway. But uh, if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to the book of Jonah? You'll find that closer to the end of the Old Old Testament. A little change in plans. We've been studying the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. But today I, I want to talk about, we know that our home place is not here. It's in heaven. That's declared through the blood of Jesus Christ. But I want to talk to you today about realistically being at home right where you are. Because I believe this. How many of you ever felt like you, you're just not where you, you know inside you're not where you're supposed to be. You just feel that way. You just feel inside there's something that, that, that I'm, I'm missing something somewhere. And I pray today, I don't know who this message is for. Maybe it's just for me. I, I don't know. But, but I know as I studied this, this is where God took me. And it blessed my heart because as I study about Jonah, he's realistically, he's just like you and I. He's living in a world that's turned upside down. And God is speaking. But like a lot of people, he's running. Will you pray with me? Father, will you just this morning, Lord, I know your word's already anointed. I know it's already declared. Lord, I've already asked many things of you already this day for this very hour. So Lord, I just simply ask you, dear, dear Lord, Father, Daddy, will you open the windows of heaven? Will you pour in this place your anointing? And Lord, by your spirit, will you speak to people? And will you, Lord, through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, touch us and change us for your glory's sake? And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, I, I realize that the Lord, He really he spoke to me last week. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we pray about a lot of things, you know, and I think sometimes we go back and we pray, we pray over everything we prayed before. And I get in the habit of doing that. And sometimes I think just by faith, we just need to say, okay, Lord, you know I asked you. Now thank you. 
thank you, Lord, because you know what I need right now. And so I tell you, that's something that realistically he spoke to me before last Sunday. It really touched my heart. And I know, I know, I know that he already knows the cares of my heart, and he knows the cares of your heart. And the thing is, hey, sometimes we just need to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that you know what I need. And thank you that help is on the way. If you're in Jonah chapter 1, let's look in here the first three verses. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of... Uh, I should have picked an easier verse. Huh? And especially with the writing. Amatea. Saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Today, I'm going to stop right there because that's where we're going to start it today because I want to talk about today sometimes by just our own little... Uh, consciousness, our own little whims in our life, we make decisions to do things that may not be the will of God. And we find here in these verses, here's a guy named Jonah. Jonah has heard from God. And let me just make it clear today. Today, listen, God has already spoken everything He wants to in His Word for us. Now, I thank God for the Holy Spirit that He ministers to us and He speaks to us through His Word. He speaks to us in our times of prayer. He uses other vessels to speak to us. God uses all things for His glory if we're listening. But here's a guy named Jonah, and he's just like you and I, and God speaks to him. And God's got a direction for his life. He's got a, a place he wants him to go. He has got, God has got something big in store for Jonah. But Jonah, just like you and I, listen, he's got his own priorities. He's got his own things to deal with. He's got his own agenda, and he's got really his own plans. And realistically, his plans are not anywhere near Nineveh. And so I want to speak to you, first of all, about impulses and urges. First of all, if they do not line up with what God has said, it is out of the will of God. So any time that we get out of the will of God, we better be careful. Because as we study through the Scriptures, the next part of Jonah is he finds himself on a, on a ship going away from, from where God would want him to be. And I want to tell you something. Uh, realistically, listen, we all make choices. We all make decisions. And they're either going to take us in the direction that God has for us, or they're going to take us away from all the best that God has designed for our life. And so every day we're going to make choices. And in this circumstance, for Jonah, he makes the wrong choice. I love as we end there in verse 3. Verse 4 picks up and it says, But the Lord sent a great wind. Now let me tell you, there's a pause between verse 3 and 4 that we need to stop and ponder on for a minute. Because I want you to know something. Hey, sometimes when we make the wrong choice, it's not a storm at first. Sometimes things seem just fine. Matter of fact, Jonah could have justified himself. He could have said, hey, God provided for me the fair. He must want me to run this way because He made it available to me. I want to tell you a little secret. Hey, sometimes things are there and available a lot, and they're not from God. And they can be leading us away from the direction that God has for our life. So Jonah gets on the boat, and the amazing thing is, is it must be smooth sailing at first. And I want to tell you something. Sometimes running from God can be very smooth at first. Sometimes getting away from the plans that God it can be very quiet at first. But I'll just remind you that hey, many times in the distance we can see the dark clouds rolling. We can see the lightning just happening in the clouds. We can hear the thunder and that's going on. But there might be a stillness right there where we are. And that's exactly where Jonah is. He's in smooth sailing. I had to write this little quote down because this calls this comes from Charles Spurgeon. I mean, this was wonderful. I, I couldn't imagine ever really thinking about this until I read this little uh, quote from him. It says, While the ship sailed smoothly, Jonah forgot about his God. Jonah could not be distinguished from the variety of heathens that were on board. Can I tell you something? Hey, the sad thing is, is a lot of times when we miss the direction of God and we're going in the wrong direction, then listen, we get so far away that we forget about God. And I believe that's right where Jonah was. You see, there's a reason sometimes we're uncomfortable in life. There's a reason why sometimes we feel like, this is not it for me. Sometimes there's, there's a reason we've got to realize that, hey, that uneasiness deep down inside of us, that might be God. Trying to smoothly and quietly as we're sitting alone, trying to get our attention. 
The Jonah ship kept moving further and further away from the plan of God. I'm going to stop here and insert just a little story now. I remember years ago I was working on Kings Boulevard. I think that's Kings before you get to Selwyn. If you've ever been up to downtown Charlotte, there's a the big old CMC Main. If you come out of there on Kings or Queens, you take a right and you'll go down there and go down through a little curve and you'll cross uh, East Boulevard. And then the next place it starts to straighten out. And I mean, these houses are beautiful. They're old, beautiful houses. Their lawns are meticulous. And I'll tell you, it's just, honestly, it's just, if you go through there, you can only imagine that years and years and years ago, this was almost like a little paradise. And I remember we were working on one of those houses down there. I remember if you're going towards Selwyn, and it's down, up there on the left, it's, got a, it's a beautiful home. Painted brick. Now it's two-story. Well, we start on it, it's one-story. And I was working for this contractor, and they had the framers come in. It was a one-story. They wanted to build up two stories. And uh, so they did all this work to get it ready. We were going to come in, put the brick on it, finish it up to the top, dry it in, and then they were going to come back and paint it. And we had other stuff to do there too. But, but I remember, listen, one day after we had started working on the brick, we got up to a certain point on the windows of the second story. And I wasn't there, by the way. I was, in, I was behind the uh, airport, and I got a call from one of the guys there and said, the crew leader said, you need to come quick. There's something wrong. And I remember getting there, and I was like, what's the matter? What's going on? You know, I thought there was something terrible. But I got there, and he said, he said I've been checking it, and I've been doing the, the, the measurements. And he says, when we get to that window, that window is going to look like this when we finish it. I was like, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? And so he, we had to call the contractor in. He came in. We're upstairs, you know, and he's inside. Of, and we finally realized, hey, somebody has got to get a transit. If you don't know what a transit is, it'll shoot a point around, and you can find a level spot so you can measure everything from it. So we decided to get one and set it up inside the house because everything on the outside was lined up. You know what? We got in there measuring. In the back right corner of this house, it's almost an inch and three quarters higher than the front of the house and the left side of the house. Something was wrong. And I don't, this was no little mistake. This house had a slate roof on it. And so if you, you know about roofing, I mean, this is high dollar problems. So the contractor, he comes to me and he says, listen, we've got to change the brickwork to match the framing. It's the only way to do it. We'll shim up things on the inside and make it work out. This is the only way to make it without having to tear everything down and start over again. But I, I'm always asking too many questions. It gets me in trouble. I know. Because I'm like, how in the world can one corner be off so much in the other corner? And the framer standing there and he said, well, he said, I remember we had to order the studs for this house and that room had to be a certain height to fit their, uh, the furniture that was going in there. And it was not a standard height. He said, so we had to adjust the, the we had to order longer studs to adjust it to work. And I was like, yeah, I understand that. But why is that corner taller than that corner? Sure enough, he calls his guy up there and he says, you know, we noticed that when we were starting to lay the wall out before we ever stood it up, that we did the corner and the other corner, we put the top plate and the bottom plate, and we had to cut every single stud different in between there. Now, some of you that know framing, you know this is not perfect. I know. Hello! But you see, all along the way, listen, with every cut, there was a sign that something was not right. With every move, hey, listen, there was a ding, you know what I mean? I mean, come on, the lights on stairs should, upstairs should have come on somewhere. This is not working right. If we have to cut everything different, it's not all the same. There were signs all along the way. My friend, I want to tell you something. Listen, when we get away from where God wants us to be, there are signs all along the way. Things don't measure up. Things don't work out right. It gets harder. It gets difficult. And you know what? It is painful to us as God watches as we continue to make another step further away from where we're supposed to be. The next part I want you to realize, remember we're going back. I know I got off on a little tangent. A little story I had to share there because it was just burning in my heart as I was thinking about that. But if you look down in verse 5 of, of, verse, of chapter 1 of Jonah, 
Well, listen to this. It says, then the, the, here's the storm. They're in the middle of it. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it to them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. You want to know? Listen, here is a major telltale sign about Jonah. Number one, it tells that number one, that, that inside of him there is a storm raging that's louder than the one on the outside. There's turmoil inside that's louder and stronger than what's going on all around him. And you know what, my friend? That is what happens when we're off track and we're going in the wrong direction. But you're never going to feel comfortable with God until you get back to where you're supposed to be. But the further you get away from where you're, you're supposed to be heading, the more uncomfortable it's going to be. And, but here we find this guy, he's able to fall asleep. Now I may need some notes here because this is good stuff. He's not like Jesus who during the storm he's at peace in the hell. No, because Jesus was the peace in the hell. You know what I mean? But no, this guy, he is asleep. And listen, here's what really spoke to me. Because a lot of people, when they're running from God, they're sleeping. There are Christians that sleep. You may say, now wait a minute, preacher. You can't say that. I talk to God all the time. Can I tell you a little secret? A lot of you talk in your sleep and you don't know. You may say, I'm walking with God, preacher. Don't say that. Can I tell you that three out of ten of you won't have it one time in your life got up and you have slept off? I remember as a child, I didn't know I did this. I didn't know I slept off. But I remember getting in trouble. I had this, I was addicted to ginger ale. I mean, my mama said that she heard something clatter in the kitchen one night and she went in there to see what it was and there was a little three and a half, four year old boy with a, with a bottle of ginger ale turned up. Gun, gun, gun. I was just chugging it away. I didn't ever know I walked in my sleep. And you know what? Probably most of you don't know it, but you do too. You may say that, but when the Lord is moving, I'm affectionate. I can feel Him and I cry sometimes. But you know that a lot of people cry in their sleep. You see what I'm trying to tell you is, listen, this guy was asleep. He was a child of God because he was called by God. But he was asleep and he was missing where he was supposed to be. And we've got to be careful because it's easy to fall asleep. I believe in this time it is the easiest time ever in the history of the world to fall asleep because there's so much going on. There's so much turmoil around us. Storms are raging. And sometimes we're just drifting off. Because truthfully, we're more concerned about what we want than what God wants. The saddest part of this whole story is he slept in the hell. Listen, all of the unsaved, all of the lost are on the ship deck and they're crying out for mercy. And the answer is in the Bible. The answer is asleep. You see, when we're getting away from God, we will sleep. Because we'll be unproductive in His kingdom. In chapter 2, we find Jonah. It says in verse 1, he says, Then Jonah prayed out unto the Lord his God out of the fishes of that belly. I got in my notes the big letters S O S. A lot of times, listen. We're not ready to turn around. We're not ready to go until all of a sudden calamity has hit us head on. A lot of the times it takes us to be in such a situation as though in a belly of a fish. Remember it's dark. Remember it stinks. And it has to be totally uncomfortable. But here he is when he gets to his lowest moment. He finally remembers calling to me. And isn't that how we are? I don't know about y'all. I'm talking about myself. I'm trying to preach to y'all something I already know on my own accounts. I, I, God has shown me many times where, listen, I'm going on my own ways and I've missed his ways. And I get to a point, it's smooth sound at first. But after a while, it starts raging around. It gets uncomfortable. And then when I realize I'm at my lowest point, then I'm ready to cry out to God. Save me, O Lord. 
Help me and get me out of this situation. I want to be with you and at peace with you. I want to be homecoming. I want to be at home with you, God. The amazing part is in verse 7 of chapter 2, he says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Now I know this, and I'm not the only one in here that before I go in the grocery store, I need to make a list because I forget half of it. I know I'm not the only one in here. Listen, when I go to town, I need to make an, an order of list of, of, of places I need to be at because if I don't, I'll miss it. I know I'm not the only one. Because y'all tell me the same stuff, but I'm like, I'm having a problem with that too sometimes. But how could we, listen, how could this guy or us get in a situation where we drift so far apart from where we're supposed to be, from what we're supposed to be doing? But realistically, we have to be spit out in the reality of where we really are has to come to. Before, like he says, when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. And my prayer came in unto me, unto thee, into thy holy temple. My friend, today I want to tell you a little secret. You don't have to wait till you get into the souls. You don't have to wait till you fall in the you don't have to wait till everything looks so dark and gloom around you and you don't see any way out. You don't have to wait till it gets to that point till you remember to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, listen, He says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. He said, call unto me. He said, just bring your burdens unto me. He said, He would lighten the love. He would make it easy for us. He said that when we go up with Him, listen, it means that we are grafted together with Him, that He will lead us in His ways and make things happen in our life for what He wants to happen. But my, listen, my whole message is today, you don't have to wait till it gets so bad to come home. You don't have to wait till it gets to a point to come home to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can stop right where you are and you can say this day, Lord, I choose you. Lord, I want to go. Even though I'm scared sometimes of where you might lead me to, I this day would like to come home and be at home with you. You don't have to wait till it gets to Jonah was one decision away from getting on the right path. And my friend, I don't know where you are today sitting in here. I really don't. And that's a blessing. You know why? Because we've all been in different places in life. Sometimes it's been good, sometimes it's been bad, and most of the time we don't want anybody else to know where we are. But I want to tell you the truth, just like God knew Jonah. Just like God knew where Jonah was. He knows where you are today. All He wants you to do is stop for a moment call on His name so you can put Him first in your life and He can lead you to the promises He has for you. Father, I thank You this morning for Your Word. Lord, I thank You that You're a God who, Lord, even, even like Jonah, when we run so far and so fast away from You as we can, that You're a God who won't leave us there. I thank you, God, this morning that, Lord, you, you never leave us nor forsake us. And, Lord, even when we get in our own places, we determine for ourselves. Thank you, God, that you will not leave us there and turn your back on us. I thank you today that through the blood of Jesus, I thank you that, Lord, there's restoration power in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, even though we may have missed the mark somewhere along the way, I thank you today that, Lord, through the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, you will restore us. Lord, you, you give us a hope. And, Lord, you give us a future for His glory's sake. And Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for that one that may be sitting here today. Lord, maybe they've been running from You a long time. And it may not be, Lord, that it's anything huge in others' eyes, but in their eyes, it's been big. Lord, I pray today this is an opportunity for them to call out to You. Lord, there may be one in here today that doesn't know You personally. And they've been running from giving their heart to You. Lord, I pray today that, Lord, Your Spirit would draw them and they realize that all they have to do is call on Your name and You will save them. Thank You, Lord, that You're our all in all. Thank You that You're one breath away from us is just a mentioning of Your name. 
And I thank you today, the Lord's still in your name. There's healing to our hearts. Lord, there's restoration for our lives. Father, we thank you today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, if you wouldn't mind standing with me this morning, we're getting ready to close our service. And this is going to be your opportunity. If the Lord has touched your heart today in any shape or form, I want to encourage you to come. Pray. Call on His name. Or you can, actually, you can sit right where you are and heal your heart to Him. Maybe if you're here today, the Lord is calling you to, to be in service to Him at this place. Hey, we open the doors of our church today to you, inviting you to come today and be a member and be a part of what the Lord is wanting to use you for in His plan here. But I'm just asking you today, if you would, be obedient to what God is telling your heart so that when you leave here today, you can rejoice and be glad in Him. Amen, Brother Ronald?